Hey folks, my name is Ryan and I'm here to tell you about something I'm very excited for called Project Keg Rocket, where a few of my friends and I are building an actual liquid propellant rocket out of, you guessed it, beer kegs. Yes, this rocket will run on a pressurized concoction of ethanol stored in this keg and liquid oxygen stored in this one, making these beer kegs an integral part of this rocket's propulsion system. Why would you do this, you might ask? Well, why not? But in all seriousness, amateur rocketeers have been building memed and themed solid fuel rockets for years. Like this rocket made entirely of denim, this horrific but incredible rocket made from Furbies, or even Joe and Zyla's flying Christmas tree. Alternatively, most liquid rocket projects exist as highly technical, purpose-built devices with no room for fun and games. Now, there's some pretty good reasons for that which we'll navigate, but this rocket is meant to be a fun, accessible juxtaposition of some pretty serious rocket science with good old-fashioned SUDS storage devices. So, in this episode, we're going to talk about all the technical things we did to, first of all, find out if beer kegs are a viable starting point for a liquid fuel rocket, and all the things we did to prep them for use in the rocket itself. Most amateur rocket projects are what's known as solid propellant rockets, which produce thrust by burning a solidified chunk of premixed fuel and oxidizer inside a rocket motor like this one. Keg rocket, on the other hand, is what's known as a pressure-fed liquid propellant rocket. Here, a liquid fuel and a liquid oxidizer are stored under pressure inside some tanks, and then fed into a combustion chamber to be burnt. Therefore, the tanks we choose are going to play a large role in how this rocket works. Enter the beer keg. This is a quarter barrel pony keg, and while there are a few different sizes of keg to choose from, I chose this size specifically because it's the smallest cylindrical keg that has these characteristic keg ridges on the side. Since the absurdity of having our super fancy liquid rocket tanks just be freaking beer kegs is kind of the whole theme with this rocket, I wanted to use something that was immediately recognizable as a beer keg. This keg is made from 304L stainless steel, which is easily weldable and most importantly doesn't lose structural integrity when exposed to the extremely low cryogenic temperatures that our rocket's oxidizer, liquid oxygen, exists at. Now, the manufacturer only rates this keg to hold about 43 psi. But based on what I know about its geometry and some rough napkin calculations, this particular design should be able to hold around 250 psi before it starts to permanently stretch out and burst at around 1000 psi. That'll require some small modifications though, and we do live in the real world where unexpected things happen, so we'll have to verify these predictions with some testing. If we flip the keg over, we'll notice our first obstacle to reaching this keg's maximum pressure potential. This is a burst flap, and it's a strategically weakened point in the pressure vessel that will fail first and non-explosively if the keg were to somehow become overpressurized. This is a very important safety feature, and one should definitely not disable it by welding it permanently shut. In a liquid rocket tank, you also need a way to get the liquid out the bottom, and you'll notice there's no hole here. We've remedied that by adding a hole and welding on a 37 degree flare fitting, which is a very common implement on aerospace and hydraulic equipment. On the other side of the keg, we have the neck. This is normally where you'd access the good stuff inside, but in our application, the plastic and rubber seals here would never survive near liquid oxygen. We're going to chop off this lip and replace it with a custom machined 304 stainless steel cap welded to the neck. Welded to the cap will be a compression fitting, which I chose because I can also use it as a pass-through fitting for a dip tube later on. You'll notice we're processing three kegs here, and that's because one is meant to become Keg Rocket's fuel tank, the other is Keg Rocket's oxidizer tank, and the third is our special destructive test article, which will burst test in a flight light configuration. In order to most safely blow up this keg, we're going to employ a method called hydrostatic pressure testing, where we will pressurize the keg with a incompressible liquid as opposed to a compressible gas like air. Water is relatively incompressible, so a sudden rupture of the tank means that water more or less just falls out. If the keg were to rupture full of a compressed gas, that gas would then rapidly release all of its stored energy as it decompresses, resulting in a devastating explosion. I don't want that, so we'll hydrostatically test with good old-fashioned incompressible water. 
Charlie Garcia previously made a great video that goes into a little bit more technical detail about how he set up and proofed the keg tanks for his test stand, and I'd recommend checking that out too. I think we'll need up to about 1500 PSI to burst this keg, and there's a surprising number of household items that can generate 1000 plus PSI pressure. Grease guns are one of those things, so I picked up some grease and met up with my friends Clinton, David, and Jamie. Then, attempted to pressurize the water-filled keg through a long length of quarter-inch line to maintain a safe distance. Turns out that not even a grease gun advertising 10,000 PSI output can effectively flow grease down 20 feet of small diameter tube like this, and the keg remained intact. What do you think of this? <laughs> show. Whoever, whoever designed this test is just, man, I'm glad I don't work for him. Or with him. <laughs> <laughs> Since I didn't want to risk contaminating the flight kegs with grease anyways, I decided to bite the bullet and build my own high pressure pump that works with water natively. You can buy these, but uh, yeah, no. Effectively, this is a small piston with two one-way valves and a big lever arm, which is precisely controllable and easily capable of generating a totally overkill 6000 PSI. Now that we're back in action, I pulled up the test procedure that we wrote in Epsilon 3, which is a procedure management software that helped us execute this test safely and effectively. I was able to run a preliminary pressure run, pressure cycle the kegs several times, and finally run a burst test. This clip of the keg bursting just goes to show that even the safest possible method of burst testing can still be... a little spicy. This is due to the elastic tension in the material suddenly dissipating its energy when the keg lets go. The keg ultimately failed at the weld between the dome and factory neck fitting, which is not really where I was expecting, but in retrospect it makes sense due to the sharp corner here. I also noticed that the whole keg bulges by a noticeable amount, which is something I was interested in characterizing due to the implications it has on the vehicle's design. Going into this, I knew that I wanted to use the kegs at no less than 250 PSI, and the data here indicates that the keg can in fact hold enough pressure to be useful in our rocket. So with that green light, we went ahead and welded up the two flight kegs with fittings and performed a hydrostatic proof pressure test of 400 PSI on each one, once again using Epsilon 3 to manage the procedure. I also set up a dial indicator to watch that stretch I mentioned. Leftover moisture could also be bad, so I flushed out the remaining water with technical grade isopropanol, which will evaporate much more readily than water. To help it even more, I then set up a space heater blowing on the keg to promote evaporation, and also a pure argon purge to displace any vapors. And there you have it. With each keg tested, clean, and dry, we've got ourselves a pair of keg-based tanks for integration with this vehicle. Now, this video is not sponsored, but the project itself is fortunate enough to receive some help, so I want to give a shout out to Amygda Launch, who is a BevAlc marketing company who specializes in new product launches, which even just by the name alone is a match made in heaven if you ask me. Well, that's all for now, but if you want to see more of this project log type content, definitely let me know by liking and subscribing, and uh, as you can see, we're a bit farther along than we covered in this video. so. Uh, give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram where you can find the most up-to-date info on what's going on with the project. All that engagement is really fun and it helps keep the momentum going forward on this project so we can launch this bad boy sometime soon. Once again, I'm Ryan Callahan. This is Project Keg Rocket. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. Ooh. I'm trying to just be weird about it. <laughs>